This episode is brought to you by Fairdesk, a crypto derivatives trading platform founded by six former Binance execs and three former Morgan Stanley architects. Fairdesk is a company focused on building a platform that enables traders to profit from both rising and falling markets. Sign up today and CB will credit you up to $600 in trading funds. For more information, visit Fairdesk.com. Link in the description below. Double from stacking Toshis, yeah, this my two Satoshis, Toshis, this my two Satoshis, so tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis, yeah. this my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis, who need two cents when they can get double from stacking Toshis, yeah, this my two Satoshis, this my two Satoshis, tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking Toshis, yeah, yeah, that's where you need to get the real news at, stop messing with them lanes out there, CBTV, let me out of here, pop! It. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks! We'll do it live. Okay. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing it live. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis with yours truly, Crypto Blood. Let's drop Take off a couple shots before we get started. I hope everyone's doing well today. I saw some 248 people in the building. Drop your area call right now because I'm getting a lot of love from the glove. That's where CB resides right now. Mind of Tron in the building. Thanks for tuning in, my friend. 248 in the house. That's what I'm talking about. Ken Smith, one of my YouTube premium members. Thank you for joining in, my friend. Also, Wisdom Bars, another YouTube premium member. Thank you for tuning in, my friend. USA Gami. It's been a while since I've seen him. He's in the building. Thanks for tuning in, my friend. Pro bro, 2482. Okay. Okay. We strong, ladies and gents. We strong. Wisdom bars. The shy, 773-727. Can't too, man, this is this is good. This is good love right here. So I'm getting a lot of people starting to come in from Michigan. I'm 
listen, all my YouTube people, all my viewers are in Michigan or close. Let your friends and family know that you got somebody here in the city that's representing crypto and giving the real good news. Not no uh, 10,000x Pepe meme coin. No, I'm not doing none of that. I'm not doing that. Not saying you can't make money doing that, but nine times out of ten, they're just straight, they're just basically playing on your emotions. You know, they're looking for clicks and for views. And hey, it does it does its job for sure. I'm here to give you something a little bit deeper uh, that that you can really run home with and execute in your investment strategy for uh, the crypto space. All right. You stream perfect time. All right. Sounds good. That's that's for sure. I'm still looking to do. And, and this is what Provost is saying. Still waiting on that meetup. The meetup is coming because what I want to do and I was polling the, the, uh, the live chat, I think last live stream, I'm trying to do something where I have Rice TVX come up. All right. We do it somewhere in the city. Live. My two Satoshis. All right. Live. We'll have a special guest. Just trying to see if you guys are interested in that, because if you are, we'll definitely set that up soon in the, in the next 90 days, hopefully. And then we'll go do my city. Then we'll go down to North Carolina and do there. All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. But again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Welcome to another show. Do me that one favor, though, before we get going. 21 people in the building. I need you to go ahead and scroll up. And smack that thumbs up, guys. Please subscribe too. I need you to sub subscribe to the channel because I'm seeing a lot of new places, uh, new faces, I should say, in the place. So please definitely subscribe if you guys haven't, and click that bell to be uh, notified of the videos that I drop because a lot of people, I've got like 20 something thousand people. Most people don't see my alerts. All right. So definitely. Uh, do that for me as well. We got Will45 in the building. Shop of Will. Thanks for tuning in. Kurt Wilson said, right under you. All right. We're in Ohio. Ohio in the building. I'm, I'm assuming. 847 in the house. What area code is that? Lazarus, let me know. Let me know. Yeah, but smack that like button right now guys right now before we get started really quickly fairdesk is my partner for cryptocurrency trading uh i gotta deal with them bloodalytics and fairdesk now you don't have to sign up for bloodalytics to take advantage of this but i just want to let you guys know we are changing the bonus reward schedule now we're talking sixty-five thousand dollars in deposit rewards if you and we've switched it up now so you don't need as much to deposit 150 K to get $65,000 in deposit rewards. And those rewards essentially go against your losses. It takes 60% of your losses and goes against your trading fees. So definitely click that link in the description below. You'll see this landing page. If you're interested, sign up and uh, take advantage of that. We also have, if you do a thousand dollars, is, and this is the threshold for you to receive 50% off the Bloodalytics system. But if you deposit $1,000, you will get $50 in deposit rewards. All right. So it goes all the way up to $65,000. But everyone pretty much can gain something from this program. All right. Link in the description below. And again, if you are looking to have your trades automated on Fairdesk, check me out bloodalytics.com link in the description below and if you deposit at least that thousand dollars send me your uid number i will generate a 50 percent off promo code for the six month and 12 month subscriptions for bloodalytics so it's a great deal and uh we've got all the kinks worked out and we're starting to definitely move up in our account balances uh since making those adjustments and getting everything uh locked and loaded it was my first time setting up with the help of, I have to admit, the help of Chat GPT, <laughs> because I'm a programmer, but I've never really programmed in Python, never set up anything uh, in in that nature. I'm really kind of a front end de developer, CSS, PHP, some back end stuff. Um, which, by the way, PHP is like <clears throat> I think the language most used on the web right now. 
like 70 percent of websites and applications are php which was interesting i didn't know that I learned that uh maybe about a year ago but um yeah guys check it out ken smith is a member he'll tell you about it we're getting we get definitely getting to the swing of things and getting back to uh those gains after those glitches i had so we're all good in gucci now so check it out if you guys are interested south of grand rapids guess what john jack i was actually up there not too long ago up in the gr the land of the the, the what do you call it? devos <laughs> land of devos they need to rename the city um but yeah grand rapids actually has a uh michelin star restaurant up there we don't even have one in detroit that's crazy but nice little city up there in grand rapids michigan the biomex blood what's going on man thanks for tuning in my friend smack that like button smack it smack it smack it all right so also real quick follow me over on rumble guys rumble with me in the jungle uh, rumble.com i'm going to drop a link to my two satoshis link for rumble there please come over and join me just in case they ever decide to machine gun killing me on youtube it's very possible with this censorship as we heat up and get towards this election you know i'm gonna be very vocal so hey <laughs> might be lights out for youtube and cbtv but you can always find me on rumble so please follow me there even if you don't use it now just have it locked and loaded so just as a precaution all right also twitter is where i'm most active if you guys want to ping me i'll ping you right back on twitter that is again where i'm most active Ten thousand eight hundred followers let's get in, getting close 11k let's get to that 11k ladies and gents so follow me on uh twitter as well please crypto blood underscore is the name let's take a look at where we are i'm gonna do a hard refresh on the market cap so you just saw i said 1.2 trillion we're now at 1.16 trillion we've lost four uh what is that four forty no yeah forty no four billion dollars sorry four billion dollars off the market cap uh so we we're having some struggles here ladies and gents bitcoin is down 4.3 percent right now as you can see ethereum down 3.4 percent top 10 are not doing all that well guys uh but the meme coins meme coins doing very well we'll get to that later well at least uh pepe was i think it's in the top 100 now and this lets me know i'll get into this later but seeing pepe at least it was in the top 100 maybe not anymore seeing pepe in the top 100 lets me know this bear market is not over still a lot of froth in the markets guys so i'm just saying john jack said yeah devos on gr i'm out of the city loving being left alone on the farm that's my man that's what i need to do my my job. Uh, and let me tell you if old sleepy gets in one more again i'm out of here <laughs> hey i'm with it i'm just saying mind of trying to halfway between flint and aa and lansing and detroit okay all right all right mark in the building thank you for tuning in long time supporter long time round of applause to mark I don't forget my longtime supporter. I think he's been with me since 2017. So shout out to him and his support of CBTV. It is much, much appreciated. Let's go ahead and uh, get into the schnitty, mitty, nitty, gritty. First, <laughs> today's, oh man, today's word of the day is Sinecor. Sinecor. I've never heard of this word. I have never heard of this word have you guys let me know if you have it's basically a position requiring little or no work but given the holder status and financial benefit oh i wonder who that sounds like uh last name starts with a b father is sleepy we know who we talking about saying, you know, he's def he definitely had a sinecor situation going on over there with Burisma and Ukraine. I'm just saying. So let's see if you guys can put that into context in today's episode. Let's take a quick look at Forex Factory. Let's do a hard refresh. And it is Monday, May 1st. 
I assume came out this morning a little hotter than expected. All right. I assume came in at 47.1 with a forecast of 46.8. So that means it the market, the, the economy is still hot, guys. I'm just saying last month was 46.3. So yeah, things are not slowing down in the economy like you know they want it to to look like it is all right so with that being said i'm just more evidence that we will see another rate hike i think this week if i'm not mistaken uh tomorrow we got jolts job openings so we'll see how that comes out and then i think wednesday let's see let me scroll down maybe it's next week maybe it's next week fomc no it is this week may 3rd fomc Man, Wednesday is going to be fireworks. So be prepared. Wednesday, 2 p.m. FOMC, federal funds rate, FOMC press conference. I will most likely go ahead and do it live, ladies and gents. I will do it live. So look for a uh, live stream of the FOMC statement and press conference thereafter. At 8.15, we have ADP non-farm coming in tomorrow, uh, Wednesday as well. So again, it's going to be fireworks. Hope you guys are prepared. My crypto space said Wednesday rate hike 25 basis point. Crocodile Dundee, I don't think you want me to use it. Uh, use what, my G? Help me out. May 3rd. Yep. You think FOMC will raise? I absolutely do. Absolutely do, Biomex. I think they will raise a quarter basis point. For sure. For sure. Stock market really quickly before we get into crypto. Dow ended up sliding toward the end of the day. It was up like a third of a percent earlier. I don't know if you guys saw my two cents video I did uh, maybe about two hours ago. Go check that out if you missed it. It was all about, what is it, First Republic Bank. Dun data. Dun data. JP Morgan acquires it. Making the JP Morgan that much bigger. And I don't think it's going to stop here. It is not going to stop here. The This is just the tip of the iceberg. And so uh, we'll see how things pan out. Very uh, telling how Bitcoin has reacted to this, though. I'll take a look at Bitcoin in a second. But I first want to look at the Dixie. Dixie did bounce off of those lows. It looks like it might be heading to uh, make a new local high. You got to watch out. It looks like we breached the 102 point 23 range so we might be going for either uh 102.80 or for the 103.35 but ultimately we got to get above 105.88 that is the really the local top but it looks like we're forming a bottom dollar getting a little strong here guys i don't know but what's not getting strong is bitcoin unfortunately and you say, well, why? Well, I kind of went through a little bit of that in my two cents video earlier today. So, again, go check that out. But essentially, guys, Bitcoin is a risk on asset. OK, I, I think Bitcoin will have its day. Cryptos will have its day again. It will be the most and it has been the most outperforming, best performing, I should say, asset class in the last 10 years okay so i'm not saying don't get into crypto i'm just letting you not guys know i would not be putting all my dry powder in at these levels because i see lower lows coming in for us okay if i zoom out you know who's down there at twelve thousand six hundred dollar bitcoin our buddy elmo round of applause for elmo holding it down down there in hades he's just waiting for lucifer to take him I'm hoping that we hold 12,600. That is my, uh, that's my, that's my best case. That's what I think is going to happen. I don't, I don't think we're heading lower than 12,600. Of course, by the time we get back to uh, 18,000, all the people that thought we were going higher and we were in a bull market are now going to be super bears again. So they're going to be telling you we're going down to 10,000, 8,000, $5,000 Bitcoin. 
that's just how it always works the most hyperbolic you know uh jim kramer ish type characters are always the ones that are extreme to the upside and extreme to the downside i'm just saying i'm just saying oh word of the day <laughs> yeah man let's see how you can put that into context pepe coin overtake shiba in you in trading volume rise of a new challenger so again to me you know unfortunately i don't know if you guys shout out to those who did catch the wave on pepe give me a drop me a one in the chat room if you caught the wave um but i didn't okay unfortunately i didn't i can't look at every freaking thing i'll drive myself nuts and i'm damn for damn sure not looking at a meme coin because nine times out of ten i'm losing most of my money on the next downturn but those who are lucky enough to catch the wave on pepe well guess what this indicates to me that uh we're still in a in bear market so so a lot of newbies a lot of new traders and you know people that don't understand how market structures work may say oh seeing pepe go up 2700 percent is a sign of a bull market starting no 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 that's not what's happening here in crypto bull markets start with bitcoin my round of applause for bitcoin so you're going to see the big dog make the move first then the altcoins will go crazy all right that is typically or how how a new bear market has always started in crypto thus far does that mean it's going to be that way forever no not at all not at all but at least we do have uh some history to go off of okay it doesn't repeat but it does kind of rhyme history does all right so we have again 27 hundred and ninety percent roi congratulations to all you guys please take some profit please take some profits so the new meme coin has no relation to furry and is not its initiative that's interesting because again you guys might not know this might be a little new to the game but crypto blood has been in the crypto space for 10 years at this point now and i remember when there was a kanye coin back in 2013 14. shout out to those who were around then but yes kanye had a coin and it wasn't his coin though it was not his coin and guess what kanye's lawyers did back then they actually sued the the creator of the kanye coin anyone remember this shout out to all those who remember the kanye coin i never even bought any but uh yeah they kind of uh shut that down because they were using his brand his image his likeness for a cryptocurrency so they were successful at uh stopping the kanye coin could that happen today probably not this market is much more decentralized meme coins are you know can be rolled out anonymously more anonymous than they were before okay and uh i don't think if this were to happen today he would be able to stop it i really don't you know but i say all that to say i'm wondering if at some point the creators of pepe will uh kind of go at the meme coin token creator because they're not the same people so that's something that i just wanted to highlight and keep in in your mind as a potential issue in the future it might not be the, the creator might not care and nine times out of ten he probably won't care but just something to think about so are you guys buying pepe i'm not i, I missed the boat i missed the boat i'll buy some maybe on the this next downturn in the crypto markets that we're witnessing like right before our eyes okay bitcoin has breached that trend line that i told you guys to watch we're back under it so now this is a bearish signal for me once we breach this area of the trend line straight bearish you could have went short there you definitely could have went short there so 
um just keep that in mind big curious mom one of my youtube long term look 2017 again we got a lot of 2017 people in the building shout out to them she said i got 50 dollars double plus love memes there you go congrats on that litecoin hasn't gotten it's having pump man yeah but unfortunately bro a having in a bear market means little to nothing you might lose uh less than you would um and if it were if it weren't a having but don't bank on a having just completely uh pushing a coin up in any meaningful way in a in a bear market it's just not it's not gonna happen people bored holding blue chips play meme games in bear markets yeah that's what that's what we did back in uh 17 18 remember people were just playing games in in the telegram rooms had nothing to do so they started doing stupid stuff for sure so my pepe uh at profit and holding like five dollars worth for a moon bag i hear that man uh 26.50 is my bearish threshold pro bowl said nope no pepe i've been in dca mode for about a year oh that's great shout out to john jack for playing the, the long game there mexican charlie lisa i was hoping you would at least hit 250 by this year i don't think so but listen mexican charlie lee uh, again another shout out to mexican charlie lee another 2017 subscriber he's been a long-term supporter of litecoin and let me just tell you you're going to get your day you're going to get your day be patient dollar cost averages in litecoin i'm telling you this is from my OG. Get you some Litecoin. It will shock a lot of people uh, in the next five years, I think. I really do. So, yeah, bearish right now at this point with uh, Bitcoin and subsequently the crypto markets. And if we go over here, let me hit cancel, save. We go over to Bloodalytics really quickly. You will see. Uh, we went short on Bitcoin. Uh, let's see if I can get this to come up here. Zoom out a little bit. So we went short on Bitcoin, guys, over the weekend. So we were well ahead of this move down. We went short all, all the way on uh, at 29.50 on Sunday. We went short on Bitcoin. So we're we're in some nice gains right now with, with uh, Bitcoin, guys. So kudos to those who are holding holding it down in the blood analytics and if you take a look at um we've been trying to pick the bottoms and go long on ethereum but unsuccessfully so we're still long on ethereum right now and uh we're short on binance so giving you some free trades there so yeah we'll see with uh pepe if this is going to continue or is the run over i ain't touching it with a 10 foot pole i'm just not uh some new data from the nft world i told you guys that i thought nfts were done at least the pfp ones profile pick type of nfts those are your board eight yachts those are your uh, mutant apes and you know all of those that really don't have too much utility they try to make some utility around it crypto punks another og one but uh i'm staying away from them i think that wave is completely done and there's new data i thought we were at a low and would start building at least a base because we dropped like 90 something percent off of the highs in the nft pfp game but new data has come in showing that we've made even newer lows according to data from blockchain uh, analytics firm into the block only six of the top 20 collections by market capitalization recorded increased trading volumes over the past 30 days remaining collections experience listen to this a significant decrease ranging from 20 percent all the way down to 99 percent oh lord oh lord the trading volume for the popular nft collection crypto punk punks which is the second largest by market cap plunged 60 percent within the past month other top digital collectibles such as mutant eight uh other d moonbirds and doodles also tanked 20 
53 and 73 percent or i should say 73 and 63 percent respectively yikes so you're looking at a 50 percent reduction on other d that's crazy however board eight yacht didn't do too bad they're the largest out there and they saw a 24 percent increase in trading volume yeah um again i'm just not <clears throat> I would rather you allocate your funds to uh, literally a meme coin at this point. If you had to just go DGEN, it would not be in the NFT space. I think it is done, Dada. I did a, a video about how Meta is doing a full pivot on NFTs and the metaverse. It's pretty embarrassing because they've changed their whole brand identity to Meta. And now they're not even focusing on that. Now they're focused on AI. Maybe they should rename themselves to AI now and just act like they'll own all of AI by changing their name. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that. Cryptocurrency transfers coming to Venmo users in May. So Venmo has um, already allowed users. I don't use Venmo. Uh, but those who do know that you have been able to purchase crypto and sell it on, on Venmo since 2000, I think 21. If I'm not mistaken. Um, but now you're going to be able to actually move coins off of their platform. So truly own your cryptocurrencies. All right. So it is owned by PayPal. If you didn't know that announced that in the coming weeks, it will enable a new feature allowing users to transfer cryptocurrencies on and off the platform. This move is seen as part of Venmo's continuous effort to cater to the growing demand for crypto based services among its users. So they actually started in 2020. Uh, let me see. When did they start at offering this? I can't remember. I think it was 21. But I'm not seeing it here at this juncture. But yeah, man, uh, I guess that's good news. Um, I wouldn't mess with it. I'm just saying I wouldn't mess with it. Gemini warns Barry Silver Digital Currency Group of a $630 million default risk. So they're still into it. Guys, this is starting to heat up even more. Gen Gemini, Genesis, and its parent company, Digital Currency Group, as well as creditor committees, agreed to initiate a 30-day mediation process to drive to a final resolution as soon as possible. So um, I don't see this being resolved in 30 days. Let's just face it uh dcg ain't got 630 million i don't think they do uh it goes on to say for earn users gemini said two important dates you need to keep in mind here guys if any of you are wrapped up in the earn program i do have a few people i know personally that have money locked up in there so you need to pay attention to may 8th uh or may 9th and may 11th all right Mark those on your calendars, May 9th and May 11th, the period which, uh, during which DCG is expected to pay the Genesis bankruptcy estate a sum of $630 million. It ain't gonna happen. I'm sorry. Let me know if you think they're gonna pay. Get, drop me a one if you think DCG will pay the 630. Drop me a two if you think they ain't got it. Love to hear your feedback on that. This is hilarious. He does got it. <laughs> Justin Sun calls six uh, fifty-six million dollar token transfer to Binance and quote unquote oversight. So this guy was trying to get over there on some sneaky link stuff and uh, start mining, um, farming, I should say, from a launch pool of the Sui coin, and CZ called him out. CZ called him out. So CZ took to Twitter this morning after news broke that Sun had transferred $56 million to the exchange, warning him that Binance would, quote unquote, take action against it if Sun then uses the funds to acquire Sui tokens on the launch pool. This is why I like CZ. And I think this is why they hate CZ, the powers that be, that is. CZ went on to explain that Binance's launch pools uh, are intended for retail users, indiv individual investors, as opposed to institutions, and not just for a few whales. So he kind of chin checked them there. Shout out to CZ for that. 
So yeah, your guy uh Justin Sun at it again, making up excuses. He said something about it was a mistake. Then he blamed it on team members. Couldn't even, you know, cowardly, so cowardly he couldn't even take ownership of it. He had to blame it on team members. Well, you know, it was probably him. At least he probably gave the okay to do it. So it, at the end of the day, falls on him, not your team members. They're just probably executing it. Never trust Justin's son. I hear that, man. Jerome Jones in the building. Round of applause for him. Chavez Thomas in the building. Round of applause to him. He's in the Chi Town area. Throw me what what what's your area? So he's north of the city. What's your area code? We're dropping area codes earlier, man. Let, let me know your area code. Justin A Avocado. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> we got Dave Digital in the building. LTC Perosi. Yes, indeed. Yes, hit that like, everyone, please. Another long-term follower, 843 area code in the building. Shout out to him. 215 represent. All right, all right, all right. 519, Windsor. Okay, Windsor in the building. Round of applause to Windsor. My Canucks right across the water. Yes, indeed. You need to come out to uh, Armand. You got to come over across the border, man, and, and come catch uh catch the crypto blood and rice tvx meetup we're planning it's gonna be live man we're gonna make it happen 713 in the building yes indeed yes indeed so cz doing his his thing by catching oh sneaky links justin son trying to move some money over there to exploit this new coin man when is enough money enough I just don't know. Let's get to the main topic for today, though, ladies and gents, with 54 people in the building. Make sure you take this time really quickly before we get into the nitty gritty. Make sure you go on ahead and smack that like button for me now. Curly, go ahead and curly. It. Curly and Mo. Hit it up. Hit it up. Greatly appreciate it. So let's let's look at this one out of uh, Decrypt Media as well. Why everyone is keeping a close eye on Mount Gox. So there's one uh, blockchain, if you want to call it analytic company, came out and said that, uh, yeah, some funds were on the move, guys. I don't know. Let's see what they have to say. So it looks like... uh, Akram, a blockchain analytic firm, said that while it's linked to the defunct crypto exchange, Mt. Gox and the U.S. government had moved large amounts of Bitcoin. So it turned out to be false alarm for the Mt. Gox side of things, guys. But they did say that they believe that some of the government funds from those wallets were on the move. It said here, but it led some to believe that the dip in price came because the government started dumping large amounts of Bitcoin into the market. On Thursday, last Thursday, that is, uh, another blockchain analytic firm, Glassnode, said that the American government and the and the Mt. Gox trustee held 250,000 and, and 137,000, almost 138,000 Bitcoins, respectively. Guess, get this. A combined ten billion dollars. Woof! And advise investors to keep an eye out on the funds. This is a significant amount. This is definitely a significant amount of Bitcoin to hit. Uh, you know, hit the markets. Now, I don't think that we really have to worry about the government ones right away. Because I think those are going to be sold over the counter institutionally, okay, at, at some nice, seductive price, right? Only, only uh, the powers that be, only the one percenters will be able to participate in that auction. But I don't think those will be really something that anyone participating in the government's auction to buy the stash that they have. Those are long-term players. They're not buying 
to then turn around and sell in the markets. So I'm not concerned about that. I would be more concerned about when the Mount Gox uh, stash starts hitting the markets, because those are going directly to those people who were owed those those Bitcoins. And who knows what and how they're going to get rid of their stash. They may not liquidate all of it, but they're going to sell some of it and most likely won't be over the counter. It will be with whatever whatever exchange they're currently trading with. So you're going to see a, um, a, I think, a bigger impact from the Mt. Gox funds than you are from the government funds. OK, so that's just my two Satoshis on that. But 10 billion, that is a lot. And this is even this is even crazier, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. This really upsets me. I'm just going to put it to you that way. Look at this. So according to our data, the U.S. government and Mt. Gox trustee hold $10 billion worth of Bitcoin. But look at this chart from Glassnode. This is crazy. Look, U.S. government balance. So the yellow that you see is the amount of Bitcoin they hold. Why the hell has this been going up ever since? <laughs> January of 2022. Interesting, huh? I'm not trying to put a uh, uh, um, tinfoil hat on, but I'm just saying it's been heading higher since 2022. Okay. And you see the little dip that happened right here around uh, March of this year. I talked about this. They sold a little slice of their stash. But what's going to happen is, in my opinion, they're going to sell into strength, at least sell to those individuals and institutions that are buying from them. But I don't think those institutions that buy from the government are going to sell anytime soon. So you don't have to worry about that. My concern is that why the hell is the U.S. government the largest holder of Bitcoin? Now, do we have a problem or do we not have a problem? You guys got to help me out. I'm just saying. Is this an issue to you? You know, what happened to Bitcoin being for the people? And, and we're looking at it now. The government owns most of the Bitcoin in circulation. That to me is a old okie dokie, but not in the tailpipe situation for me. I'm just saying. A little weird, a little weird. Let's look at Mount Gox trustee balance. To the contrary, it's been slowly going lower. I don't know how. Uh, but we are now flatlined and have been since July or uh, January, I should say, of 2018. But this is the supply that you should be worried about and you should be keeping your eyes on. And I'm definitely going to continue to report on it. So, you know, come back to CBTV whenever you see headlines about Mount Gox. Uh, I'll be right on it for sure. Toltec said what you expect us gov has all the money but they didn't buy it they confiscated it that's how they <laughs> acquired all this they weren't buying it us government stole most though through sec exactly still every coin commission you guys already know i coined it still every coin commission s doyle said watch what they do not what they say exactly exactly facts they are adjusting them male palms for a former group. <laughs> we have a problem unless they kind of back usd by bitcoin no they're not their whole plan is to uh mine of tron they're looking to on offload all of this bitcoin by 2024 which again if you slice and, and peel back that onion if they're selling all their bitcoin you would think they would not sell if they felt that bitcoin's prices were going higher why would they sell now? If Bitcoin was going to a million dollars, why would you sell now? Well, I think they think they're going to be able to attack Bitcoin and the crypto markets. They're already they're already doing this, but even more so to where the price is going to be suppressed big time. OK, and uh, I think they will get this knocked down some more, but they can't keep it down. This unlike gold and silver which is traded in one centralized market, the COMEX, right? There's not a ring-fenced 
operation where only big where bitcoin can only be traded on one exchange bitcoin is decentralized and cryptocurrencies are decentralized in that nature even if they ban most cryptos in the united states they still can't suppress the price discovery from the thousands of exchanges out there around the world so that is the good news that is the silver lining in all of this in my opinion what's uh this i go on a meetup where uh yeah we're gonna i'm gonna post it on meetup it'll be on meetup we're gonna do one in detroit and we're gonna do one in north carolina we'll give you guys details and then if things are uh successful from these meetups we'll try to have special guests there as well we will move these to other cities near you we want to do a, a, a whole u.s tour and just meet up with people in real life that's what it's all about like round of applause for that. but that is pretty much it guys i appreciate your attention for sure make sure you guys like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this that's my two satoshis i'm out of here holla to satoshis this my two satoshis tune in and get the latest and greatest from stacking toshis yeah yeah that's where you need to get the real news at stop messing with them lanes out there cbtv let me out of here Pop. <laughs> fuck it do it live i can i'll write it and we'll do it live okay right. fucking thing sucks we'll do it live okay. <laughs>